I couldn't resist my young hot teacher, so my husband took this away from me. Although it is wrong, giving in to desire feels so good. I am the only one to blame for the position I am in right now. Have any of you found yourself in a situation like this? How did you come out of it? I know I have messed up and there's no way I can undo it. I, F, 40 and have been married to M, 46, for 12 years. My husband, Dan, works for a marketing agency. I'm a housewife. We have two boys who are 10 and 8 years old. I met my husband 15 years ago. I was a waitress at a restaurant slash bar that was really trending those days, <laughs> where he used to visit regularly with his friends. I always found him good looking. He always made a point to sit in my booths. One time, the other waitress tried to serve him but he refused and requested for me. I waited for him to make a move but nothing. One day I thought I'm gonna ask him out myself. He beat me to it though. He was my last customer that evening. After my shift was over, I came out to find him waiting for me. He asked me for my number and a few days later when he texted me asking me out on a date, it was an instant yes. We dated for three years before we decided we should get married. Our marriage was everything one could dream of. I worked for a little while after our marriage, but when I conceived my eldest son, I stopped going to work. I've been a housewife since then. My family life was going extremely well. My friends always used to tell me that they are jealous of me. My husband loved me. We had two wonderful children. It was really a dream life till I had to go and f up everything. My husband at work requires him to travel a lot of time. It wasn't much of a deal since I always had the boys and was never left alone, even when I wanted to. My boys went to boarding school this summer. I didn't want them to go so young but it was a tradition in my in-laws a family. My husband had gone too. I started feeling lonely after my boys went to boarding school this summer. My husband was out for work mostly as well. All my friends were also busy in their life. It also started to feel really boring. I thought of joining some classes. It was the best way to pass time. I browsed some classes near me and finally decided that I should join art classes. I always had an interest in art in my school days but never got the time to continue it. I had all the time in the world now. I went to the website of this art class near me. An artist who was in his 30s was conducting these. I quickly filled all the formalities and enrolled myself quickly. In the evening when Dan and I were having dinner, I told him that I was joining an art class. He was excited for me. You should explore your hobbies Han, he said happily. I truly had won the lottery for the best husband. He was always so supportive. The day for my first class finally came and I went there. I was quite nervous. At the age of 40, starting something new felt quite intimidating but Dan was right. I needed to explore this for me, I thought as I looked in the mirror. I wore a white sundress. I didn't want to look too uptight or anything. I finally reached the location. It was a studio. It wasn't either too big nor too small. It was a good place. I was the first one to reach there so I admired the interior and everything. It had a full-length mirror on one of the walls. Whoever designed the interior of this place had a good choice. Found something you like, a voice broke my attention. I turned to look and found a young man standing near the door. He smiled at me and I gave him a small smile back. I'm John, your teacher, he introduced himself. This young man was going to teach me art. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. I introduced myself to him as well. John smiled at me and told me to take a seat. John started asking me what I liked more, drawing or painting. I told him that I liked both. It's all right with you, I'll start by explaining the basics to you. I was confused as I was the only person there. Aren't we going to wait for other people? I asked him. He told me that I was the only one in this class. I only take one-on-one -on -one classes, he said smoothly. I must have missed that on the website. John started explaining to me the basics. He told me what all objects will cover etc etc. There was something about John. 
I couldn't pinpoint it but he gave me a different energy. He would give me complete attention since I was the only person in the studio but it was also the way he looked at me. Like I was special or something. It felt weird to get this type of attention from a stranger but let's be honest here, I also enjoyed it a bit. Whenever I was drawing something or painting something, John would come and sit closer to me. He got really close to me a few times. He would hold my hands and show me where I was going wrong. It didn't feel like a normal teaching equation but I couldn't tell him to maintain some distance. I didn't want to. I always looked forward to going to the studio. Even though I had scheduled classes twice a week, John had told me that I was always welcomed here to hang out or to draw something. Whenever I used to visit the studio, John would always treat me with such warmth and gentleness. It felt good. Even though, it also felt wrong to receive this type of attention from a stranger when I had a loving husband back home. Dan had gone out of station for a work-related thing. I thought that instead of being alone at home, I should head to the studio. I got ready, putting a bit extra than I would have normally put in. I picked a cute dress and also applied my favorite red lipstick. I told myself, I'm doing it for me, but a part of me knew that I was lying. I went to the studio and found John there. He was surprised to see me. I told him that I would like to draw something here if that's alright with him. He said it was perfectly fine and we both took our seats. I was engrossed in the piece I was working on that I didn't realize when John came and stood behind me. It was only when he placed his hands on my shoulders that I looked up at him. Beautiful, he said. Oh thank you, it isn't completed yet though, I thanked him. He laughed then. That piece is great, but I was talking about you. You look beautiful tonight, oh. I was stunned. Thank you I guess, I told him quietly. I started feeling nervous suddenly. Even though I had a teeny tiny crush, as the kids today call it, it still felt inappropriate. John took my sketchbook from my hand and kept it on the side. He started massaging my shoulders. What are you doing? I whispered, my voice coming shaky. Just give you a massage, relax your shoulders for me, I didn't know if I was imagining it or his voice was more husky than normal. I told him it's not appropriate but he wasn't letting it go. His hands went to my back. I haven't been intimate with Dan lately since he was always busy with his work and I was always busy with the kids. We didn't spend time together like that anymore. So as John kept massaging me, I realized that I missed it and now when I was getting it, I didn't want it to end. That night I made the biggest mistake of my life. I went to his home with him. My conscience knew that I was doing the wrong thing but desire took over and conscience died. Don't get disgusted but John gave me something I was missing. The way he touched me aroused the desire inside me. I slept with him. I came back home the next morning. I left John's house while he was sleeping. I couldn't look at anyone. I felt so horrible. John kept telling me how he couldn't get enough of me and wanted more time with me. But my guilt wouldn't let me spend more time with him. As I came to my home with memories of my family, the guilt increased tenfold. I'm a horrible woman, I told myself. I have a loving husband and a wonderful family. I shouldn't make such decisions. I did my household work and decided that I will never keep foot in that studio ever again. My thoughts got interrupted when I got a call from John. Why did you leave like that, he asked me. I told him that what happened between us can never happen again. He refused to let it go. He told me that if I didn't go back to his house, he would come to mine. John seemed the type of guy who would actually do it. I was sure he had my address from the information I put in the form when I joined his classes. I didn't want him to come to my home. I didn't want my neighbors to see him and ask questions. I didn't want to risk something like that so I decided to go to his house and tell him face to face that whatever happened between us can never happen again. I reached John's house at 8 o'clock sharp. My resolution to tell him my decision dissolved when he opened the door and kissed me instantly. I wasn't used to this urgency and passion and it felt so good, I feel awful for that. John treated me with such warmth but at the same time he used to treat me with so much passion. I missed this passion with my husband. It was there in the beginning but as responsibilities increased, it went away. 
You could have it now, John told me, and even though I knew the right thing was to leave his place, I couldn't. I stayed there. I thought of giving myself one more night and that would be it. The next morning, John woke up before me. I can't have you running away again, he told me when I asked how he's up early. He brought me coffee and put my hair behind my ears in a soft touch. I know you feel guilty because of this, but you don't have to, he told me. He explained to me how we all need something in our life to have some fun. It's not right, I told him. He kissed me and asked if it felt wrong to me. I couldn't say yes. Being with John felt right in some way. He gave me passion and urgency. Maybe he was right and I did need it. I was always the dutiful wife. The good mother. I could have this for me just for a little while, I thought stupidly. I told John that if we agreed to continue this, we have to be secretive about it. We came to a conclusion as to how we will meet on days when Dan will be out for work. Dan wouldn't even notice this, I thought in my head. I left John's house and came to my home. Dan was going to come home that night. I did some cleaning around the house and then prepared dinner for him. Dan came home around evening. While we were having dinner, he told me that his mother's birthday was coming up and they were having a party at their villa. My mother-in-law's birthday has always been a huge celebration. The whole family, they have a pretty big family, comes together and celebrates it. Everyone loves it because it's those few times when the entire family comes together. I told him that I was going to get her birthday gift soon. The day of the family gathering came. I hadn't met John for over a week by that time. I got a message from him in the morning telling me that he wants to meet me. I told him that I couldn't meet that day as I had to go for some family event. He kept insisting that I go to his house, even for a little while. He was so persistent that I gave in and told him I'll be there. I made some excuse to Dan that I forgot to pick the birthday gift. I made my way to John's house. As soon as I made my way inside his house, he started kissing me. I kissed him back and we went to his bed. After an hour later, I realized that I had to rush back home as I needed to go to my in-law's house as well. I rushed to my house. Dan reached the house 10 minutes after me. We got ready and went to their place. Dan told me that I looked really beautiful and the guilt came back. I smiled at him but felt awful. The evening was amazing. All of my in-laws are really warm and kind to me. They have always been kind to me since the beginning of my relationship with John. My mother-in-law told me that she's happy to see Dan so happy with me. She has always been a mother figure to me. Her being happy for us made me feel so regretful for what I'm doing with her son. We came back from their house. The guilt I was feeling overwhelmed me. I didn't realize it when I started crying. Dan asked me what was wrong. I told him that I missed the boys. It felt weird lying to the man I have spent 15 years of my life with. The guilt consumed me and I decided that I was never seeing John again. Giving in to the temptation felt good but I cannot hurt Dan. I stopped texting John and stopped picking his call. I thought everything was going to get better but I couldn't have been more wrong. One day, when I opened my text messages, I saw intimate pictures of me and John. The pictures were taken from an angle where it was clear that it was me. John had sent me this. He asked me to pay $50,000 or he would send the pictures to my husband. Hell, that bastard trapped me. I was so livid. How could he do this? But the fault was mine. I trusted a complete stranger and looked where it got me. Karma was a bitch, I was sure of it now. I didn't have the money he was asking for. I also don't want those pictures to break my family. If anyone has any suggestions as to what I should do, please leave in the comments. I'm in desperate need of help. Update. It has been more than six months. John kept blackmailing me initially, like someone said in the comments. I told him that I wasn't scared of him and I would take him to the police if he continued to harass me. It didn't work because he knew he found my weakness. I couldn't give him that much money even if I wanted to because I didn't have it. If I asked Dan for such a big amount suddenly, he would have figured something was going on. 
I asked John to give me some time to figure something out, but that bastard didn't listen to me. He sent those pictures to my house to scare me. He must have thought that I would get scared and give him the money instantly but instead of me Dan found that envelope. He was home early from work while I was at the grocery store. I came home to find him sitting with the envelope in front of him. I didn't understand what was going on but one look at his face and I knew that he knew. I didn't even need to see the envelope but I did. There was no point in lying anymore so I told Dan the complete truth. I told him how guilty I felt. I couldn't stop the tears coming to my face. I begged him for his forgiveness but he showed no signs of any emotions. He left the house shortly after that. I stayed awake waiting for him but he never came back home. I texted him as to where he is. He wasn't picking up my calls or answering my texts. I contacted his friends but no one knew where he went. I just received a text from him the next morning to never contact him again. Just like that, my whole life crumpled in front of me. It hurt a lot knowing I had no one to blame for it except myself. Two days later I got divorce papers from our lawyers. Dan had requested for full custody of the boys. I called him up, grateful when he picked up. I begged him to not do this. I asked him to not take the kids away from me. I can't let them get raised by a woman I hate so much, he said without any emotion. In all these years, he had never spoken to me like this. I knew I had f***ed up everything and there was nothing I could do to salvage it now. I got a call from the lawyers telling me to leave the house by the next morning as it was legally Dan's property. John called me once again trying to scare me but I told him that I had already lost everything and to f*** off. It felt slightly better. My sons refused to talk to me as well. Dan must have told them what had happened. No surprise that they hate me as well. I left the house in tears and have been living with my parents who also don't talk to me and have told me to find a place for myself as soon as possible. Anyone reading my story, I just want to tell you that even though giving in temptation feels so good, don't let your conscience die. I made that mistake and there isn't a moment in my life when I don't regret it. Hey, Reddit, I need to get something off my chest. Recently, I made a thoughtless decision to gauge my attractiveness by creating a Tinder profile behind my partner's back. It was a huge mistake that I deeply regret now, and I'm desperately seeking a second chance to make things right in our relationship. Here's how it all went down. I got into a major fight about priorities with my boyfriend a few weeks ago. I had seen that he was becoming so absorbed in his work that we were barely seeing each other. I felt like I wasn't a priority to him anymore and it made me really upset. We ended up having a heated argument where we both expressed our frustrations and concerns. He informed me that the next two months would be hectic at work because he would also be filling in for his friend. He declared his love for me and promised to take me on a trip to a location of my choosing after all of this extra work and overtime was over. He keeps his phone out of his sight at work, so I didn't buy his excuse of being busy. We hadn't had any quality time together in a few days, and I couldn't help but feel abandoned. I made the decision to talk to him about my worries and the insufficient effort he was making in our relationship. But I couldn't get rid of the uneasy sense I had that there might be more going on than just his long hours at work. My partner got really busy with his job and would often come home late and barely have any energy left to engage in meaningful conversations or activities with me. It was frustrating to see our relationship taking a backseat to his career. I could not believe that this did not affect him in any way. As the days passed, he started acting like usual without addressing the issue that we had. I did not know how to react to this, and I was feeling pretty low. One day, I was talking to one of my friends about the issues in my love life. She suggested that I go to meet her to take my mind off things. She had also invited a few of our common close friends as well for a sleepover. We had a great time catching up and doing something fun together. It was refreshing to have a break from my relationship troubles and just enjoy the present moment with a good friend. The laughter and positive energy we shared reminded me of the importance of surrounding myself with supportive people during difficult times. After all the fun and games, when we were lying down tired after all the energy spent, I poured out my heart about the things going on lately. I told them how this is affecting me both mentally and emotionally. 
I don't feel good about myself anymore and might be slowly heading towards depression. After listening to my side of the story, my friends suggested that I need to find a life outside of my relationship as well. Also, they mentioned that my life cannot circle around my partner and that I need to find a positive purpose in my life, which is different from my identity as a girlfriend. As the days passed, I kept going back to the conversation I had with my friends. It was true that I did not have any other identity apart from being a very good and understanding partner. I was figuring out a way to become an independent individual. I had tried my hand at a few hobbies like reading books, taking up dance classes, and also tried to learn a new language. I could not focus on any of it for more than a few days. It did not bring any change or happiness to the current state of my mind. The last attempt was to try out yoga as I heard a lot of good things about mental balance through yoga. It did feel refreshing for a bit and I actually liked this new hobby. I found that yoga not only provided physical benefits but also helped me achieve mental clarity and peace. The practice allowed me to escape from the chaos of everyday life and connect with my inner self. As I continued with yoga, I noticed a positive shift in my overall well-being and a newfound sense of contentment. It became more than just a hobby, it became a transformative journey towards self-discovery and personal growth. Once as I was doing my daily yoga session, I stretched a little too much and injured my leg. I tore a ligament in my leg and could not do any physical activities for two weeks. When the same was informed to my boyfriend about my leg injury, he paid little to no attention to it. This caused further rift in our relationship. It made me wonder if this was the same guy that made my heart skip a beat in the past. It was very alarming to see little to no reaction from him for my state. In fact, he actually blamed me for trying to fill up my boredom with something productive. Since I was bedridden without much movement, I would just be a couch potato and do a lot of mindless scrolling on social media. I had no option but to be bored day after day. I wanted to change that so after a lot of thought, I decided to create a Tinder account with the sole intention of seeing if I could receive validation from strangers on the internet. I wanted to know if I still had it. I carefully selected my best photos and crafted a witty bio, hoping to put my best foot forward. With a flick of a metaphorical switch, I entered the world of swiping right and left. At first, it was exciting. Seeing the matches flood in and reading flattering messages from potential suitors, it was the validation I had craved from my partner for a long time. It fueled my ego and temporarily soothed my self-doubt. A few days into the left and right swipe world, I was enjoying all the attention that I was getting from all places. This was something that I had been missing in my life. I was gaining confidence and starting to have a new identity for myself. Though it was superficial, I could not stop myself from checking and or responding to all the messages I was receiving. It was quite overwhelming. As the responses started rolling in, it seemed harmless at first, a mix of compliments and constructive criticism. However, things quickly took a turn when my inbox began overflowing with DMs from strangers, leaving flirtatious comments and attempting to initiate conversations. I didn't know how to react. Part of me felt flattered by the attention, while another part felt guilty for even putting myself in that situation. I never intended to cross any boundaries or entertain advances from others. But deep down, I knew this was an experiment that could quickly spiral out of control. It didn't take long. One day, out of the blue, my partner asked me if I was on any dating apps. My face turned pale, and no words came out of my mouth. In all this thirst for validation, I had actually forgotten what I was putting at stake. I lied through my teeth, saying that I did not need any apps as I already had what I needed. There was nothing much said after that, and I had forgotten about this conversation with my partner. Days went by, and I did not think much of it. The endless cycle of swiping, matching, and messaging on dating apps continued as usual. However, deep down, a sense of guilt started to gnaw at me. I couldn't help but wonder if my partner had suspected my lie and if it would come back to haunt me in the future. I decided to delete my Tinder account. Before I could do that, my life turned upside down. My partner confronted me on the same day, showing me a picture of myself along with screenshots of chats that I had been mindlessly sending out on Tinder. I was speechless and ashamed at the same time. There we were in the middle of a full-blown confrontation from my partner. 
I accused him of going through my phone as I had nothing else to say in my defense. He told me that he never did and will never stoop down so low. He told me that one his friend's brother who had recently moved in town was looking for some company on Tinder. He started chatting with a really hot girl. He showed one of the girl's pictures to his brother who immediately recognized that it was you. He asked me if he remembered the day he asked me about dating apps and I lied. That was him trying to see if I would come clean. When he initially asked me about it, he indicated that he trusted me to tell the truth. I had stabbed him in the wound with my falsehood. He was devastated to learn that I had not only created a Tinder account, but had also shared our anniversary photos, which he had taken, with everyone on the app. I was not sure if he would ever be able to trust me. I begged my partner that it was nothing serious and that I was just bored. I was only trying to get some validation, as he had been too busy lately. I was feeling lonely and had doubts about this relationship. It was all in vain. He read me a few chats that I had sent a few guys and told me that it made him sick. The trust we had built over the years was shaken, and our once solid foundation started to crumble. The jealousy and insecurity gnawed at us, causing arguments and distance between us. I never meant to hurt him, but my misguided experiment backfired spectacularly. I apologized profusely, explaining that I never intended for things to escalate this way. I admitted my foolishness and the hurt I caused him. I begged for forgiveness and a second chance to rebuild what we had lost. His trust in me has been broken, and I fear that I may have irreparably damaged our relationship. I love him more than anything, and I can't bear the thought of losing him over my own thoughtlessness. I want to remind everyone that our attractiveness should never be solely defined by others. Our worth is not determined by matches, likes, or upvotes. We are so much more than that. I'm slowly picking up the pieces of my shattered self-esteem. Therapy, self-reflection, and supportive friends have helped me realize that my worth lies within, not on a dating app. I'm learning to embrace my imperfections and love myself for who I am, beyond the superficial judgments of strangers. So, Reddit, I turn to you for advice. How can I make amends and prove to my boyfriend that he is the only one I desire? Is it possible to rebuild the trust we had, or have I destroyed it beyond repair? I'm ready to do whatever it takes to make things right, but I fear I may have already pushed my boyfriend too far away. Comments asterisk. 1. You slash Reddit user 1 asterisk. OP, first and foremost, acknowledge that what you did was a mistake and take full responsibility for it. It's important to have open and honest communication with your boyfriend to reassure him of your love and loyalty. Patience, understanding, and showing consistent actions that prove your commitment can help rebuild trust. Good luck. 2. You slash Reddit user 2 asterisk. You are completely in the wrong in the first place to make a Tinder account. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. 3. You slash Reddit user 3 asterisk. I beg to differ from all the others saying that it is all your fault. He is a manipulating man for trying to bind you to him. OP, clearly he did not treat you the way you deserve to be treated and when you started seeking validation outside, he seemed to be upset and furious. This is typical male dominating behavior that we commonly see everywhere around us. I would suggest you to start afresh and stay away from such men. 4. You slash Reddit user 4 asterisk. Ha 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 ha, karma is real, you want advice? Go buy a mirror. How can you possibly make that many bad decisions in a row? You completely deserved what you got. Update, it has been days since my partner moved out of the house. He does not want to have any sort of communication with me. He sent his friend over to pick up all his belongings and does not want to disclose where he has been staying. I am really unsure of what I should be doing to get him back in my life. I feel like I have ruined something that was once beautiful and now I'm left with a deep sense of regret. I have tried reaching out to him multiple times, but he continues to ignore my calls and messages. The silence between us is suffocating, and I can't help but wonder if there's anything I could do to make amends and rebuild our relationship. The absence of his presence in my life is a constant reminder of the mistakes I've made, leaving me consumed by remorse and longing for a chance to make things right. 
I wish I could turn back time and undo the mistakes I made, but all I can do now is give him space and hope that he will eventually be willing to talk things through. It's a painful lesson to learn, but I am determined to work on myself and show him that I am truly sorry for my actions. I wish things could go back to the way they were, but I know that it will take patience and understanding from both of us to heal the wounds caused by my mistakes. I am hopeful that with time and effort, we can create a new and stronger foundation for our relationship, one built on trust, communication, and forgiveness. I now cherish the little things that we did for each other even more than ever because they hold precious memories of our time together. These small gestures of love and kindness remind me of the deep connection we shared, and I find solace in knowing that our bond will forever be cherished in my heart. All those memories haunt me at night as I lay in bed reflecting on the beautiful moments we had together. However, instead of feeling haunted, I now choose to embrace these memories as a source of comfort and gratitude, knowing that they will always be a part of who I am. I was so blinded on getting validated by others that I failed to see the true value of our relationship. But now, I realize that it was never about seeking validation from anyone else, it was about the genuine love and happiness we brought to each other's lives. Those memories serve as a reminder to prioritize authentic connections over external validation, and I am grateful for the lessons they have taught me. I understand that rebuilding trust takes time and effort, so I am committed to demonstrating genuine change through my actions rather than just words. In the meantime, I will focus on personal growth and self-reflection to become a better person for both myself and our relationship. I will actively seek opportunities to learn from my mistakes and work on any underlying issues that may have contributed to the breach of trust. Additionally, I am open to seeking professional help or guidance if necessary, as I am fully dedicated to rebuilding the trust that has been broken. I understand the importance of receiving support in navigating this process. It is crucial for me to take responsibility for my actions and show a sincere willingness to make amends. By doing so, I hope to gradually rebuild the trust that was lost and create a stronger foundation for our relationship moving forward. After all of this upheaval caused by the faults I had made in the ideal relationship we enjoyed, I hope my narrative has a happy and good conclusion. I want to think that our love will triumph and that we will find a way to move past these difficulties and grow as a couple. I cling to the faith that our relationship is strong enough to get us through whatever challenges we face, despite the hurt and uncertainty. I would not give up on my relationship and try every means possible to amend things with my partner. Next update once there are any improvements to the current situation. Thank you all for going through my journey and being supportive and providing me with your opinions which helped me face this problem.